What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online. Look at this, look at this beautiful, it's beautiful. crap 400 series. It's, it's not a flat car, look at that! Yeah, it's a hopper. They're expensive, they're 850. I thought they were only 750, they're they are 850. Super expensive, yeah. Yeah, so I'm back to being broke, but we've made uh, the best little train ever. Yep. Yep, yeah. one hopper, one caboose, and one good old Betsy. Because... Yeah, you wanna you wanna drive yeah. there? Let's get uh... sure. Let's let's go. We're gonna we're gonna deliver some iron today. Yeah, to the smelter. I think it it. I don't know how much money it'll make. I think it's like four hundred bucks, isn't it? It feels like it's a lot. I cannot remember how much iron sells for, so we'll find out. Yeah, we'll hopefully find out. it'll be worth it at least. At worst yeah. case, we can leave it at the iron mine and or not the iron mine. We can leave it at the smelter. And then next time we run by with the loaded train, we can take it back. Yeah, up and I bring think we leave it at the smelter no matter what. I mean, until we start transporting coal, we have no need to really bring the hoppers back here. Exactly. Um, once we start doing coal, then coal has to go all the way to the ironworks, which is like way to the south of the freight depot. Although I feel like, to be honest, since we're doing ridiculous stuff anyway, we should probably have a line that just goes over the mountain to the refinery you know, ironworks area without I'm going. a fan of doing that line. I've yeah. run it a couple times. Once, which was ridiculous in a giant wooden trestle roller coaster thing. Right. But uh, yeah, we, we we were there for that many years ago. Yeah, and then we could have like... we could have um a help another helper station on the refinery side of things, you know, and like have multiple like because we have a helper station at the iron ore mine, which could carry you up to the coal mine. And then you go from the coal mine up to the refiner. I guess we need another helper at the coal mine. We'll just have helper stations everywhere. You know what? That's We're just going to buy all the engines. All yeah. of the engines, yeah. But I feel like that route is like, it's just so much more direct. I mean, having to bring coal to the ironworks, but go all the way to the north side of the map and then all the way back south, that's insane. It feels like a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So why not just make it a lot of work and just go up and over, but make the linear distance very short? I well, support it. To be honest, we could actually we could make a line at the coal mine that, um, yeah, I guess we could make a gravity line, I was thinking, but then we're, we still have to bring the cars back up sometime, I guess. You could... Yeah, they ultimately need to make it back up the other way, for yeah. sure. Good times. So, uh, you, what, you what fun have... facts do you have about hoppers, Heist? We're, we're on the fun, <laughs> fun facts. Fun facts about hoppers, Fun oh facts boy. part of the episode, play the fun music. Fun facts part of the episode about hoppers. I mean, hoppers... It's interesting. Uh, so remember, I work for the Colorado Railroad Museum, and we primarily have artifacts from Colorado from many different railroads, but the, the one that we have the most of is the Denver and Rio Grande Western, which is the modernized version of Denver and Rio Grande, which there are a number of engines in the no, game. No hopper with. cars? No hopper cars? Yeah, they, they didn't do hopper cars. <laughs> they didn't do any hop. Okay, so... They, they, had, they had gondolas instead, which were basically flat cars with a, a smaller hopper on them. Some of which were drop bottom, which are really cool, kind of like this hopper is, but they, they never had a true hopper car like this. So the only thing I know about hoppers is that there were two ways to empty a hopper, as far as I know, which is one is a drop bottom, and that's where the bottom opens up with like little shoots like this does, little hatches, and then you, you yep. drive the car over like a, a mesh, and then it all falls underneath the, like through the, the mesh fencing, whatever, into the collection area. Um, like there's like the rails are open. And then the other way was they would disconnect the hopper car and tilt the whole car on like a big rolling barrel thing. Sometimes they wouldn't disconnect them, and funnily enough, what they would just roll it. But what the they just had like a 360 coupler? Like the a... couplers had special draft gear that could pivot like that, so the coupler itself would remain coupled to the next car. But the draft gear had a pivot point in it in both ends, so they could spin the car. And the hilarious thing that I only recently learned about is that the Rio Grande narrow gauge had that. They dumped but they didn't have hoppers. Gondola, they, they used gondola cars instead of hoppers. So longer, and they didn't have the, the tilted sides like this I mean, in the middle, for the dump in the middle, right? Uh, and they weren't as tall, so they didn't haul as much. But they had a transfer loading station in Salida, Colorado, where they took cars from the narrow gauge and transloaded them to the standard gauge. And they rolled them on this amusement park ride, roller coaster looking stupid thing that took the car and not only did it spin it, but it also translated as it spun. So it basically put it in this frame and rolled it down the side of a hill a little bit to the standard gauge track where they would dump it in. I've got a picture of it that I'll, I'll have to include, but it's just one of those stupid things like, why do they do that? Well, they got tired of shoveling the cars out by hand. So they would dump one the car way. into the next one. Yeah. 
because the narrow gauge didn't go all the way across the state or everywhere that they needed to deliver cargo. So they would transload from narrow gauge to standard gauge, and the easiest way to do it was just dump the car upside down. So they figured out a way to do that. (laughs) Ridiculous. Yeah, it's one of those things that... it, It doesn't make a lot of sense for narrow gauge when you first think about it, and then the more you think about it, you realize it makes even less sense, because... Oh, they had, so were... they had a height advantage? Like, the one was, like, dumping off the side of a hill onto the... Like, the other one was below yeah, it? Yeah, the, the narrow like... gauge had to run up a hill to get to the dumping station. That's ridiculous. But the thing that doesn't make sense about it is that the bodies of those cars are all made out of wood. Because they would twist. They had some amount of metal reinforcement, but not much. So if the car goes upside down, you're relying on wood for all the bearing of now all the weight of the trucks and the wheel sets and everything. And the trucks and wheels, you pick the car up. I don't know if they picked the body out of the bolsters of the trucks, so they left the wheels behind and just dumped the body, or if they dumped the whole truck. But if they dumped the whole truck, the, the plane bearings, they're all filled with oil. They so all, all the drain. oil's going to dump out. Like, <laughs> no, wait, none well, of you, it makes you said, any sense. You said, like, lift up the car without the truck. So are train trucks literally just keeping the car on the track with gravity like the weight of the car yeah, it's just gravity yeah even with, modern with these... day stuff like a modern day train truck if you were strong enough you could just lift a train car right off its wheels yeah it's actually even easier on the modern day stuff compared to the old stuff yeah why so, is that on, that's on... like that's like your car's suspension only staying because your wheel is like on the ground and well, like if you went over a bump with your car tons. your your front wheel would fall off that's basically like that's what that's basically doing well, so it's an ease of maintenance thing, really. So on the early day stuff, like this, that we have in the game, we have plane bearings, which means that there's a physical journal box and there's an actual bearing that has a bronze cap to it that actually provides the weight transfer between the axle that rolls and then the actual car body itself. And you have usually some cotton or a, or a pad underneath that's soaked in oil to keep the axle lubricated and everything. And so you can't really just drop the wheels out of the truck frame because you have to hold the box in place. And so they're bound in place, basically, although they can go up and down with the suspension a little bit. That said, the trucks themselves, the composite assembly that has the two wheel sets, the boxes, the suspension, that is just held in with gravity and a center pin to the car body. But the brake rigging hangs from the car body. So if you have the brakes set, it squeezes the trucks. And so technically, if you have brakes set, it shouldn't fall away or anything like that. But the ease of maintenance of modern day railroading comes from the fact that we now use roller bearings instead of those plane bearings. And the roller bearings are just sat in by gravity because the roller bearings are a contained unit. Part of it's on the axle pressed on. Part of it is the outer housing that can spin. And so that spinning housing is mounted to the truck the axle can spin within and then if you lose gravity or if you were to go over a ridiculous jump or something not that that happens in the railroad but the truck frame is free to just leave that bearing it just rides on it with nothing underneath so how much much vertical movement would you actually need like like an inch two inches like there's got to be a little bit of a nest involved there right To, to totally lose the axle you'd have to move you know the diameter of the bearing basically or at least the radius of the bearing to then clear so the like edge, it's like right? three, or, three or four inches or something like it's uh on modern day cars it's actually quite a bit it's about six inches because those oh, okay, bearings are pretty huge. big because we're, we're talking about like 100 ton plus cars that are 85 foot long in the modern day a lot bigger so uh you know it, it's definitely an interesting thing but it's made maintenance easy because okay you had a wheel get a flat spot okay well how do you change it you just jack up the truck roll the wheel out put a new wheel in no right. bolts no nuts no nothing you just right there pick it up boom new one done sold and 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 it's really efficient and it's really helped modern day railroading be a lot faster because previously with cars like this you would have to undo the five six seven bolts to undo the binder straps and then you'd have to take the boxes off and you'd have to jack the boxes as you're jacking the truck to make sure they don't tip and scar the journal and all this stuff and you're worried about it and oil leaks everywhere and it's a mess and yeah Modern day railroading is actually pretty high speed in the way that maintenance is done. And uh, yeah, it seems a little strange that, oh my god, it's just gravity, but when you're talking about 100 plus tons above you, it really only needs to be gravity with how slight the changes are on the railroad. 
Do I get room service back here at all, or am I just stuck, like, fending for myself? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just... You got a stove back there, cowboy. You don't get room service. Yeah, Cook my for stove is going, man. I'm I'm cooking up some something fierce, you know. You ever seen the show Breaking Bad? That's what's happening in this caboose right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Walter, Walter, <laughs> put out the fire in the stove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, that's good. That's good. Uh, we're now breaking trains. Yeah, we're uh, we're it's uh, fine. yeah. It's fine. I can't believe they caught us crossing the border. Yeah, there's only one line. I mean, we had to, they just, they just sat here and waited until the train showed up. Like it was, you know, it was. Dude, so it was funny, a uh, bit of international drama between my country and your country, by the way. So oh, okay. I used to work for BNSF, which is the biggest railroad in the United States. And they have a couple lines that run into Canada. And how do, how does them, that work? Do, the, they still own the rail in Canada, but it's on Canadian soil, but they, they own it as their company. Like Exactly, exactly. And, and only they have they an operating agreement. On it. They have operating agreements with the territories to operate it there, but the rules for the labor and everything get all different because you're in Canada. So the machinists and people, it was always this huge problem because it would be like, we'd have one station up in New Westminster that would connect to Seattle, basically up through Canada, up in the Northwest. And like a locomotive would just routinely just break in New Westminster and it would break so bad that they couldn't drag it back to Seattle or drag it across the border. And so we'd have to figure out visas and stuff and figure out how to send a machinist out of our shop who's capable of fixing it to Canada. And then they would have to drive there and fix it in the shift or do overtime. It was always a disaster, but we used to get all these emails about like, oh yeah, there's a hobo that's trying to ride across the border into Canada and we had to stop the train and blah, 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 because the detector picked up a, a thermal image of a of a body on the train, you know, so we had oh to stop the train and all this stuff. The amount of detection and automation that happens there is insane. All right, hold up. I'm going to grab the helper. Okay, yeah, I think we're, I think we're going to need it. So we did the math. You probably we don't, did. but like, you might. We, we might, we might. So we did the math. The porter is good for like 20,000 pounds on this grade by itself, yeah, which is not a lot, but it's, you know, it's enough. And with the hopper's weight being like 13,000 and we added the caboose for fun and for completeness, com we added the caboose for fun com and completeness. Yes. Uh, we might be over tonnage. So we're going to bring the helper just in case and have it out in front of Betsy. So choo that if choo. we need to. Oh my god, that throaty whistle. Dude, it, it comes it's, it's, it comes flying out of the gate too. Like Oh god, I'm not gonna boy. overshoot this, am I? Oh, oh please 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 don't bin it. Dude, um, it can fight its own brake. You can just go full speed with the brake on. It's like, uh-huh. Is your is it's your brake awesome. supposed to work? <laughs> like This is crazy. It's uh, a little bit sketchy because you have to use the round table to actually um, switch on, yeah. Exactly. Switch on. It's not a lot of space over here, but whatever, it works. How am I meant to open Betsy's sand hatch? Do I just clip through the, the boiler barrel? Is I have that, no okay. idea. You I, opened I did. it I or clipped you through didn't? the boiler barrel. I, I opened it. I figure while I'm waiting for you to get out front, I can try and get some sand in this thing, maybe. All right. Well, I'm out. Oh, oh, right. That's right. I have the brake on at 100% with the reverser and the reg, and it, I'm expecting it to hold it, and it doesn't. Dude, this thing's a monster. Please don't. Please don't bonk me. Don't bump. Sir, out. Yeah, I was just helping you. Look, I'll help. I'll help line you up a little bit better. All right, uh, take take us ahead here. Uh, I'm actually not even at full boiler pressure, but uh, oh, it's here, fine. Here just, we go. Just go. Just go get out of the way, and we'll see how far Venerable Betsy can get this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put her at like eight percent reg. All right, I'll, let me get some break here. All right, here we go. Come on, Betsy. Let's go! I mean, you should make it, you should make it a little bit. It is funny how much this looks like Betsy's bigger cousin, you know? Like, like right. Betsy's getting beat up at school, and then this guy shows up, and you're like, okay, I'll hey, stop making fun of Betsy. Stop and, messing with Betsy. That's kind of, kind of what it feels like. Look, you got the wood burning in the stove on the back, too. That's like extra horsepower, you know? It's right, like, it helps. <laughs> All right, so the, the grade starts on the stone wall, yeah? Uh, like the grade starts pretty much right here, yeah. And then okay, it gets up to the so gnarly stuff. About 5%, I think. I'm just oh, like, oh. I'm just cruising along. 
I jumped out to double check my brakes and I physics glitched through the train, but I managed to jump out of it. It's fine. Dude, you're Get you're back still, in my cab and you're still stay hauling. In my Betsy's cab. got those small drivers though, man. She's I don't got know. those little drivers, man. It might make a difference. You're still just She's a torquey little monster. Yeah, I'm at 22% reg right now, just casually going up 6.5% like it's nothing. It's actually kind of funny how this train doesn't even feel it. Right. It's just like, oh, okay, we're moving, cool. Dude, you're still, you're on the full 6.5 now. You're still, like, gaining she's, on me. I had to, she's slowing down a little bit. I had to crank it up to 30. That's unbelievable. Betsy might actually just... Oh, I've fallen off. Oh, so. I see that. Okay, well... I was uh, trying to get a good thumbnail shot, and the physics clipped me through. Okay, good, perfect. But well, you, you just climb back up. I'll, uh... I'm, I'm, I'm climbing. I might oh, make I, it, actually, onto the you. train. Okay, I see you, yeah. No! No, 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 the, 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 the physics! Ah! I'm stuck. I see you. Okay, well... Good news is Betsy's still going. Um, Betsy's still going. Betsy's gonna go continue going without me, apparently, because she's just... It's okay. It doesn't matter. We're fine, man. It doesn't matter. It's actually going to make it. She's just going to make it with the caboose. Okay. It was going to be close, but I thought it was going to be I think the next this. climb is longer. This gets to 0% for a bit here, obviously. And then I think the next climb up after this 0% is a lot longer of a climb. I'm going to run and try and clip the corner and see if I can hedge you off at the pass. Dude, I love the class 48. I really want like five of them now, you know, just have a right. huge... It's such a good switching locomotive. They're really cool. Oh my god, Betsy's just hauling butts now. I can't catch up. Yeah, the Betsy's, yeah. You gotta head us up at the next bridge here. I guess the, the next pass, which I, I don't even... I, don't I know can't if I believe can you fell off there. the train. What did we learn, okay, about well, jumping well, around the train? Well, we learned that being a client in Railroads Online is a painful experience between this episode and the last one, okay? Dude, Betsy's actually still catching insane okay all right all right i'm uh, i'm stuck okay i'm in the caboose oh perfect <laughs> the way car i'm in the way car i've made it i'm like silent going up this hill the one thing i will say about about um the class 48 obviously it's got the bigger drivers but the piston yep. size is huge like yeah so much bigger it's got this massive piston which is just generating so much force like there's actually itty bitty compared to anything but you know it well compared Railroads to the line size trains of... are all small <laughs> yeah that's a good looking engine though for sure i'm i'm really happy that we bought it as the first one dude i can't believe you didn't even need me the whole time unbelievable i am i'm really shocked i thought for sure we were going to be underweight i'm just full steaming it ahead to go set some switches oh my god oh my god i made it back to the cab <laughs> i can't believe it the All physics right, so was fighting me the whole way. We have to turn your whole train around. So we got to... We'll have to run around either twice or we can Dutch drop one of the cars. Dutch drop the hopper and then kick and the caboose. We got to so we 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 do, do a double, double drop. Yeah, that'll work, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get close and I'm going to... All right, I'm applying Physics a break for this. Collide through the thing. All right, I'm on the caboose. All right, because I got I'm I'm stuck. I'm 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 stuck. All right, well I got I'm Betsy stuck. here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we, well I'm, you might have come in a little hot. For we this. we're not. Uh, yeah, because I'm just stuck. Physics colliding between yeah, the, the platforms the caboose, of the cars. Yeah, the caboose physics is tough. Um, dunk. dunk. <laughs> that was a, just a little thing. All right, so... All right, I'm now on the platform of the caboose. Uh, bring him back. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta we'll, run we'll around. Drop we the gotta... caboose. Uh, we'll drop the caboose into the run around here. Oh, wait, you have the hopper behind you. I do. Yeah, okay, we do need to move this then. I was gonna say, if you had the hopper in front of you, we don't have to move this. You can just hitch it up, but no, you don't. You have a hop behind you, so you still need to use the run around again. So I gotta, I gotta move this out of the way. I mean, I could just be on the uphill end of the, hop the hopper, too. But. Nah, don't don't worry about it. We're doing some real switching operate. Okay, so how does this work in real life when you're running multiple switch, like, trains at the same time? Just very carefully? Like, it's just, that's just... Uh, in the time before radios, it was definitely, uh, make sure everyone knew what everyone was doing kind of thing. In the time with radios, you always you just check call with it. the other crew, or you're, you talk by number, so... You're always talking about number one, do this, or number two, do this. And do they have a yard controller guy that like 
you know, looks over everything like a like yes, air traffic the, the control. Yard master. Yes. The yard master. Okay. What does yep. he? What does he do? Does he have, they, I'm assuming it's all is... like modern screens and stuff now, and like all now these days. Yes, yard master is like the hardest and most thankless and awful job to have on the railroad, where oh. you are in charge of everything that happens in the yard as far as moving trains. So building consists, building cuts of cars, building, getting engineers and conductors the right places. Uh, it's, I mean, they always had, they were on fire. Anytime you called them needing something, it was always like, you better answer this question in two seconds. Uh, I've got stuff to do, you know, kind of thing. Right. So. All right. I got the class 48 parked, ready to go back down the hill. Um, okay. I are... guess I'm going to run around and... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do some switching for you. You got to run around um, and then basically just uh, drop the hopper. And we can actually Dutch drop the hopper right into the caboose, maybe. All right, I've cut it off. Okay, good. I got to flick this for you first. But the problem is we need a we need to get a huge gap. We need enough gap to like drop a whole switch, right? Well, I've, I've made that by running ahead very fast. <laughs> True. So it, it's rolling slow, but it's not rolling so painfully slow, at least. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it'll at least make it. It's close enough. You gotta Should spin, I spin Betsy? Betsy around. Yeah. yeah. Biggest waste of a turntable ever to spin a freaking 040 Porter. Right. <laughs> Goes the same in reverse and forward, okay? You can always grab it with the 050. Where's there? Okay, is, I know the the pistons on Betsy are on an angle, right? And some of them yep. are some engines have them at an angle, some have them linear. I'm assuming the angle is to give you a, a stronger lead stroke because of the the way you know the angle according to the wheel and the leverage point. So uh, it actually doesn't really change that much of a difference because oh, okay. it has to still be relative to the center of the wheel, no matter what the angle of the piston. Right. The the uphill thing a little bit was some designer's way to just try and get an easier angle on the wrist pin sometimes, which is the, the pin that connects to the uh, the cross head and ties so into the So long, long story itself. short, though, I guess the question is, does it matter for a train? Um, I got you. You can, you can drive. Okay. Does it matter for a train if uh, the, like, like, are they, are they... What's the word I'm looking for? Are they unidirectional? Like, does it is it more effective to go forward versus backwards on a train, like, just on the piston setup? Or is it really not a big deal, depending on... It really doesn't make a darn bit of difference. Um, it, it depends. Sometimes there are unique situations where it might make a bit of difference. Like in the case of RGS-20, our engine at the museum that we talk about here and there on the channel, um, 20's Johnson bar is only set up with bias in one direction. Right. So you have more teeth in forwards than you do in reverse. So you technically have more power and travel in forwards than you do in reverse. Um, does that really matter for a passenger engine that's a 10-wheeler? Not really. Except right. when you're on the Cumbres and Toltec doing a photo charter and they tell you to back up with 14 cars of freight train behind you and you can't shove them back up the hill. Um <laughs> That's the only time I've ever seen it come into play, but uh, you know, sometimes you have that. But otherwise, generally, I mean, it's really just forwards is the same as backwards. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Kind of cool how that works. It is neat, and the slight angle of pistons. You know, someone in the comments is probably more. Yeah, intelligent I understand. It's, radi it's radius me. to the radius to the center pin is really all that matters. But there's um. I'm trying to think of it because if you think about it, if you're not perfectly tangential, it's going to change the point on the wheel at which your maximum force is delivered, if that makes sense. Yeah, it certainly could because it does look like with the way that these are set up that it doesn't necessarily go precisely. Well, because so if you think about it from center, just an engineering but... perspective, if we look at it, right, like the maximum force is going to be where the center of the wheel drawing a line out from the center of wheel to the connection point is 90 degrees, right? That's going to be absolute yeah. maximum force. If your piston is straight in a line, then that maximum force is delivered, you know, somewhere slightly above or different, below. Slightly different than if it were exactly flat, yes, but I don't right. think that gets you any actual benefit because i mean it's still yeah because like on this the maximum force is delivered right at the point it's at like pretty much when it's kind of a little left of center come, come to the other side of the engine and you'll see it 
I, I spotted it there for us. Oh yeah, exactly, right? So that would be like kind of your point of maximum force, even maybe a little further back. So it's just, it's hard to say, like, I don't know. I, I, I gotta look up the math for it now. I'm sure someone's done it and understands it. And... There may be a slight advantage to having the incline, but I'm, I'm really not sure what that gets you otherwise. It's something really only seen on really little engines and live steam engines. So. Which makes you think it's probably just something done for space rather than actual. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. Easy All right, well, we've mechanical got the, uh, parts. The loaded train here, so uh, get out the way there, Class 48. We're going to send Betsy down the hill with uh, all reckless abandon here. Oh, God, I'm predicting derail. You're going to, if you don't tie that hopper brake, you are you know you're dead, right? Like, you know that that's, that's. Like, you know, I should probably do, oh, yeah, I should probably do that now, he says. Because every time I've gotten out of the cabin, Betsy, it's just murdered me. Yeah, like, I think you're dead without that hopper brake. Hey, we didn't hit. It's fine. Dude, I, I take off so fast. <laughs> you do. Okay, so I tied the brake and, uh, yeah. Now you can't stopped move. me. Uh, yeah, I couldn't move, so I gotta get on the hill first. So I gotta get scared. Look at how fast I can accelerate away from That's ridiculous. You are a little ridiculous, yeah. All right, so I got a full brake on now and I'm working against it. I love the flat drivers. Okay, so a flat driver, wouldn't that give you more blind, friction? Blind driver. Blind driver, that's what's called? Yeah. Okay, so is it actually flat or is it like concave or is it, how does it, it is, uh, It's flat in the middle and then it has a dual taper setup. So it's tapered to the outside and tapered to the inside. And okay. usually they're actually a little bit wider than a standard wheel so that you can get more contact patch as you're going around the sharper curves. And then the taper either side, if you do wander far enough to engage that taper, the taper helps wander the wheel back on and keep traction in really sharp curves. Interesting. And they yeah. would, you would get more tractive effort out of a flat or a line driver than you would out of a, a regular one? Technically, you, you would not get more tractive effort, but you would get better adhesion, yes. Just because it's got a bigger contact patch. Bigger contact patch, precisely. And, and remember, tractive effort is only just the cylinder bore, the cylinder stroke, the wheel diameter, the boiler pressure, and a coefficient for the uh, the efficiency, basically, of the Johnson bar. Right. And that's all tractive effort is. So anything with the wheels, anything with the way the power is put down is a, a adhesion question. So can you use the tractive effort? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. So it depends on the engine. Engines like these that are have all their weight on the drivers, they could probably use all the tractive effort they got almost all the time. The, the other interesting thing about blind drivers is that usually the inside to inside or backside a wheel to backside a wheel distance is also smaller than normal. So they make the wheel wider, but the outside of the wheel is still in the same spot. And so that way, when you're going around sharp curves, you've got that flat portion of the wheel guaranteed providing traction the whole way through. And uh, usually blind drivers were like, almost always for really big, long, rigid wheelbase engines. Right. And then the only other application you saw them in was crazy narrow gauge applications like these. So the class 48 having one's not too surprising. They probably ran it around some ridiculous crap back in the day. Same and they would, and they would have like, wow, you're still, you're still hauling the mail. That's amazing. I've, I've, I'm working a hundred percent against just the hopper's break and just the hopper's break with the weight of that car compared to me and the, and the way car. Yeah, I mean, it's really holding moving. me back. If we had, a, if we had a longer train coming down, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting adventure. I, uh, I think that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Once we have more hoppers, can't believe it. Didn't need the helper the whole time. That's awesome. Good to that know. That was uh, amazing. I'm glad we had that protection in place and ready for us. But in the real life, if you need, like, yeah. they would just calculate the load accurately enough, or would they do that? Would they send a preemptive helper ahead of a train and not actually, or you just be like, screw it. If we're gonna run the train, we're just gonna connect it anyway. Well, so usually they they do the tonnage math and they have on the timetable how many tons the train was good for, you know? So if you had a, and they a Betsy were pretty, class, they were pretty accurate with that, like going up they hills. Were, they were pretty accurate and they put a, a safety figure on it because we were actually doing that math back with the uh, 
our GS20 again at the museum again to figure out just how tonnage our train was. I'll wait for you up here. Um, we were doing that math to make sure, okay, is it really tonnage for the engine or is it close? And, and it was decently close, but we could have probably put another car on really before it got to true tonnage based on the curve and the grade, not just the grade, because curves also add to the uh, the tonnage rating, which Railroads Online doesn't simulate. But anyway, um, it's one of those things where you'd calculate it and you'd have the way bill and the manifest of the train, knowing how much the train weighed, and you would try it out. And if it didn't work and you were on a steep grade and they knew that helpers were going to be a thing, they could always send up a helper after you. And so a lot of times you'd have a helper on the rear that was called up to assist a train that was having some issues. Bye, Class 48. Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you again next time. Yeah, pretty much. Just enjoy your home. Or we'll get a Climax and throw it there instead. Or a Heisler. Right. That's going to be fun. All right, down to the smelter. The cool thing is now we're uh, flat grounding it to the smelter. There is a 1% climb up that bridge. Remember that bridge that was too steep? <laughs> oh, God. Will so Betsy die on the 1% If, we, if Betsy can't hopper. make it up the 1%, we might have a problem. But no, it's 1%. I'm Betsy sure pulls like 600,000 yeah. pounds on flat ground. Like, I think we're okay. I think we're fine. It's one car. This is a really cute train, though. I love the look. And, yeah, and this, is, this is a cartoon train, if you've ever, you know, you ever want to make a cartoon train, this is exactly what it is, a silhouette this, of this. This is it, yeah. Yeah. Love how disproportional the caboose looks. Right. Yeah, when the caboose is absolutely giant compared to Betsy. I mean, that, that really shows you, like, the Porter being the starting engine in this game, I mean, it's really an industrial engine. It's not really meant to be anything else. Right. There were bigger Porters that were used over the road, and uh, they Still were proposed as possible. Uh, some of them were 040s. Many of them were 060s, like the Class 48. Some of them were tendered. Some of them were tanked, but they weren't quite as big as the Class 48. And some of those were used over the road back in the day, but uh, not for terribly long. I will say, that is the one thing with Rose Online. They basically start you with a porter and a flat car, and they go, have fun. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, God, Godspeed. Here have, God, here God have speed, like, the sir. saddest <laughs> railroading equipment. Yeah. You don't really start with much. It would be nice if you started with, like, a Eureka or some kind of a road engine that's still terrible, but, you know. But I get it. They want you to actually, like, buy the stuff. And, I mean, realistically, if you were playing this smart, you would get your porter... You'd run a log camp line, a sawmill line, and you do those routes a few times, make a ton of money relatively quickly, and then, you know. And then and expand after, it after that, yeah. Yeah. We kind of rushed the expansion, which is great, because I jumped off the mountain. I'm on the bridge. <laughs> That's fine. Bye, Con. I jumped on a corner Yay! and ended up just getting yeeted. I'm climbing it's back a, up. It's a mistake. Yeah, I shouldn't have jumped on the corner. But yeah, it's like, we, we obviously rushed to expand a little bit, and, you know, we kind of rushed to iron, which is good. Now we need to sort of make some money to do more iron trips, which will be good. And, you know, obviously we get a lot more engines now. Um, but, you know, and, and rushing, I feel like rushing to iron is kind of like the best way to get money early. Obviously oil, ironworks, refinery, that sort of thing. But they take so many products to make them work that it's just... Right. Because now we can sell this iron, because we have cordwood at the smelters. So we can sell this iron when it produces to make We're going to start generating rails, and we're going to start generating raw iron. And those can yeah. start making a hefty sum. So we may not make too many carloads worth, but they may be worth bringing back to the freight depot next time. Yeah, the question is going to be how much can the Porter and Montezuma pull up from the smelter, 2%. Oh god, the 2%. It's 2% yeah, we, the whole we, way though, we, so it's... We've got the class 48 for the, the 6.5, <laughs> but we didn't think about the 2%. We need another class 48 <laughs> for the 2. No, I mean, realistically, we should get to the point where we have road trains where the 2% is not even a question. Like, that's... Right. Like, that should be... 2%'s not bad. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like if we only have, like, a couple cars, that probably Montezuma could probably handle it with just a couple cars. I hope so. I really hope so. You know, it's a sad little choo-choo. <laughs> yeah, she ain't she ain't the most powerful thing, but we gotta get some passenger cars in the game for Montezuma. So uh, that she I gotta can feel throw special. this switch. You can go straight we in. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might Otherwise, well we're go gonna go straight have to back in. in. Ah! Oh, now you're good. Got it. Nailed it. Nailed it. 100. 
Yeah, you can just drive straight in. Uh, normally, we would have to disconnect the caboose, but I think we're the saddest little train, so we could probably just go we straight are... to the unload. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just gonna run right in and, and dump it. And then it and back right there. out and leave. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think we need to do much else. Well, I guess we could leave the car here if we really wanted to, but... Just just go back with the the Betsy and uh, the Porter and the caboose. And leave the coal car, or the iron car. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Let's run around it again and yeah. So we, can, so we, we should put drop it on. the caboose on a different track then maybe. Uh yeah, I can drop it, and then um, let me see here. Where can I drop? Slow down a little bit, and yeah. uh, and then just drop it off, and it's flat into there, and I'll pull ahead. All right, I'm slowing. A little bit of break. Okay, we're good. Yeah, you pull ahead. I'm gonna flip this over. I gotta, I gotta go over. get my own switch. Yeah, you're oh, good. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get my own switch. I got <gasps> this. No, you're good. There's all the same lanes. You can just flick around. You're oh, good. well, I'm, I'm just not gonna be on the unloading track. It's fine. No, just back through the unloading track then. Yeah. I dropped the caboose. It's over here. Oh, you here. dropped the caboose over there. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Which is actually good because the turnaround, this is perfect. I can just leave it there. The turnaround track is here. So you're gonna have to spin Betsy. Um, spinning again. Yeah, man, we gotta spin Betsy. You gotta play this. Actually, wait, no, you we don't. We like to face the correct direction. Wait on a minute. Okay. Actually, no, you don't. You don't. No, have to we spin screwed Betsy. this up. We the already, caboose needed to be we on one already... of these lines. Oh no! I was gonna say, I thought it was. I, it was gonna make sense to drop. All right, we're here, gonna. You know, we're, you're right. You're right. I screwed up. We're gonna drive back with the caboose uh, in the front of the train. Uh, it's a normal. That's... It's fine. That's standard operating procedure. Standard, standard practice here. Uh, uh, do, do you have more money than me, sir? Uh, I, I have $170. How much money do you have? Oh, I've got $247. Oh, well, I guess you're unloading. Turn? You're unloading now. Is it my turn to, uh, to have the money again? Yeah, I got, I got some. I'm level five now, so I can buy all the stuff. So go for it. Okay. How much money did big, that make? Big money now. Love these little drops of the, iron. The drops are still, uh, they're still loading. All right, how much money did you make? Let's see. I've got four hundred forty-seven dollars, Con. So you made like what? Two hundred? I made I made like a little over two hundred dollars. Okay. I don't I don't remember exactly how that math works out, but that good. cordwood is rapidly disappearing, which is sad and hilarious. That's good. That's good. We can start doing some cordwood runs, make more cordwood uh, money, and uh, more iron runs for sure. So you have four hundred something. You said four hundred. Four hundred forty-seven. So we got to do another run, and then. Uh, if we you know, do another run of this and more cordwood, I feel like like we could do cordwood down to here and then do another run up to the iron and back. You know, we might be good to go. I think that's the move. Are you just leaving? You're just leaving this here. All right, cool. I'm leaving that there. I don't see any reason to put it anywhere else. Once the smelter starts really becoming more of a yard operation, I think, which uh, yeah, it's just not not yet. Yeah, when we get it, its own plus forty eight. Or when yeah. the class 48 that we have becomes part of the, uh, the smelter. Oh, I want to see people just come in onto the bypass line there uh, with their road train, unload all their cars, and then just leave. You know? And let whoever's running the smelter deal with the smelter. And when the smelter guy's like, like if you're coming to pick up an iron train or whatever, then the... Uh, keep going forward. If you're trying to pick up an iron train or whatever, the smelter guy... You don't have a break, so you gotta, you gotta push. Thank you. Okay, now you're good. But yeah, we could have the smelter guy. It's like, hey man, I want to come pick up a train of iron beams or whatever. He assembles the train in the smelter, parks it on the thing. You come in, pick it up, and leave. There you go. You know, real, real operational stuff. All right, so uh, drop yourself past the switch here, and then I'll, I'll run around. Wait, what? Drop yourself past the switch. Don't you just go forward now? Oh, I mean, we could also just shove through the caboose the whole way. But... Oh yeah, no, we're shoving through the caboose the whole way. I don't know. Oh, okay, think... why not? That's fine. That's yeah. Fine. This is how, this is the Polar Express experience, okay? We do everything. <laughs> Next, we're going to freeze the lakes and drift a train across it, okay? Just wait. It's not how that works. Just it's not wait. not how any of that works. Just wait. You just need, the problem is you're not thinking outside the box, okay? Instead of one Johnson bar, you just have two. One for each tank side. Tank drive. Tank right? drive steam engine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A tank drive steam engine. Why did they not make that? Like, I don't know. Differentials understand. on each axle. Yeah, yeah. It makes too much sense. Yeah, no, exactly. Two sets of valves. Two valve gear, you know? All that stuff. It would just it would just do the thing. It'd be perfect. Can you imagine? You don't need a turntable. You just put your te uh, your uh, train in tank mode, and then and then just spin it around. Spin it around yeah, on the precisely. spot. Yeah. <laughs> and then while you're at it, get rid of the, the steel wheels and make them out of rubber. And instead of tracks, just pave a spot. Wait know? a minute. 
you know, you're getting a little crazy there. Steam I, still I like seems really inefficient. Let's put gas engines in them instead. Make them uh, a lot no, smaller. You're losing me there, Kunk. I and don't, then, uh, you know. And then I let's like make them so that if you if you smash them once, they're like completely screwed. And uh, no, let's give them to everybody. Steel, steel wheels, steel rail, always, all the time. I don't. You're talking about some very strange concept. Can you imagine the guy who, who um, you know, drives his car with steel wheels on asphalt? That that guy, that guy is the true Chad of all the groups. <laughs> there is that person who put, like, chariot wheels on, like, a Challenger Hellcat or something that I've oh seen. Oh, my God, why? That's, that's, it's the most cursed thing I've seen this week, so. All right, so, caboose. We've got our caboose. We're pushing through the caboose. It looks wonderful. It's got two little suspension pieces. It looks like the entire axle just bobs up and down in that slot on a suspension, like a leaf spring. It that's does, it. yeah. It's a, a coil spring later, but it was probably a leaf in this era, yeah. What's the coil spring in the middle, then, of the caboose? What's that doing? Oh, that's a... You know, I think that's... I'm not as smart on bobbers as I should be. If I had to guess, it's probably for transmitting load from one side to the other. So if one axle goes over a dip in the track, it transmits that to the other one. Oh, I see. Like, a, like it's just a really long truck, if I had to guess. But I am far from an expert on bobber equipment. Yeah, it looks so like it's attached, to, to, the, at, uh, it's attached to, to the one of the side the of the leaf on either end of the caboose. So it's like it's hard yeah, to get so a view it's, of it's, it. It's actually like steam locomotive spring rigging. It's fun. It's interesting. I feel like this is going a lot smoother than this would in real life. I feel like the yeah, uh, the caboose the would travel. Are imagine riding on an ancient lumber wagon with metal wheels on a cobblestone road, but one of the wheels is broken. Right. That's kind of what a bobber caboose. Like these are like. these are teeth chattering to ride in, basically. If you're not quite teeth chattering, but close. <laughs> Like, yeah, if you were to you try and enjoy a nice cup of coffee in a bar caboose while going down the rail, would you would you actually end up drinking any of the coffee? Or you would just... not want to fill it all the way to the top. Mm. Or even close. You would fill it maybe halfway. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they're, they're not that bad, but they're not that good. And they just, they travel a lot, right? Like, they, they search for the rail all the time. They like, hunt. They... they hunt a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because you only have two two axles and that's that's it you know it's not like you have a two sets of trucks that can then each individually hunt with their wheel sets but then they kind of limit that hunting with the lateral and the axles and the spring bolster and everything and then you have two of them to then communicate that to a body no you're basically riding on the truck itself as a as a bobber so it uh, they get all they get all over the place a little bit and Betsy is just the locomotive version of that. And good God, you should see what an 040 does to the track and to the cars behind it. But it's just hilarious. Moves it a lot, or They're, they just do the. To quote the uh, the man whose 040 I got to ride behind, Staffy. Oh yeah, it does the 040 dance. Where it just, you watch it just the like... coupler at the back as it's pulling a train of decent weight, and it's just up, down, side to side, insane, all over the place because it's just. It's doing everything. There's nothing. There's no other truck to hold it relative to the rail. It's just the two axles, and so it's scooting left and right and up and down and up, you know, up and left and up and right. Well, and all especially this stuff. like as it's searching, as it's as it's putting down power, it's going to be searching for like the path of least resistance. So the wheels are like not every surface is going to be perfectly symmetrical. So the wheels are going to find like the parts that have grip and the parts that don't, and like yeah. Yeah, that's yep. it would just... and the gauge slightly changes, and I mean, they, I mean, yeah. they look like a cartoon, almost, with how much they're dancing around as they go down the track when they're working hard. It's it's kind of amazing to see. The bigger engines do it to a lesser extent. I mean, even even the huge engines, you can see them hunt and tip and do all these things because the nature of the steam engine is unbalanced just by the principle of you only have two cylinders to work with, really, on most engines. So they all do it a little bit, but the 040 is just the biggest amount of movement up and down versus side to side, front to back. Uh, and so they do quite the fun dance down the railroad. They're amazing to watch. Well, it's going to be about that time, Heist. Gonna... I think so. 
Gonna retire we're almost the to the old... freight depot. We're, we're shoving, shoving the caboose in. We're, you know, yeah. we'll just go stab it at the yard. It's not that exciting. So yeah. I think that's that, man. Yeah, it was a good, good trip. We need more money. We are so we, incredibly broke. We, You know, we said it a couple episodes ago that we were broke, and then uh, we made a lot of money, and, and now it we're took broke a while, again. and then we bought an engine, and then we're broke again. And now yeah. we need another engine, and we need more cars. Well, I feel like we could start running. We can start running like cordwood down, iron up, right? And yeah. Then... So we need we need more we need more iron cars. That's the real answer. And we, it'd be nice iron to have hoppers. a new road engine, yeah. but yeah, we need more iron hoppers first. Yeah, like we have the helper engine, which I feel like can pull easily four hoppers up, probably, maybe. I don't know. I think that would be enough, at least to start. And then we could look at maybe another engine. We definitely need another road engine because our road engines suck. Um, we love you, Montezuma, but you're yeah, also Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of... Montezuma's getting that... What Didn't you say it only lasted like seven years or something? I think we're... Pretty much on the actual railroad by, by 1880. It was yeah, like, and we're okay, I think we're on year we're seven. Done. So we're, we're just... Pretty much. We're getting to that point. Um, time, time for some bigger motive power. But... Yeah. Well, yeah, let us know what you, you know, guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you check out Heist's channel. Put the link in the description. Uh, I don't know which lane you're going into, but whatever one, it's probably good enough. It's probably fine. We'll just yeah. I can't see any of the cars in the yard. Oh, so perfect. I assume yeah, we're it's just going to go full speed to the back of this stuff. Oh, so hey, just, look. There's cordwood cars there. Uh, break. Yeah, just break. We'll, we'll breaking. Breaking. Or stake cars. Anyways, breaking. Breaking. There but we yeah, are. Yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, and, uh, you know, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.